Hello and welcome to this special early edition of The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. Coming up, a preview of tonight's community forum in Brisbane. Will Tony Abbott debate the economy? Will Julia Gillard hit the floor? The Coalition reveals its costings, so are they on the money? And Bob Brown tells us what he wants if the Greens win the balance of power. Our panel tonight, cartoonist Fiona Kataskis, ABC online business reporter Michael Yanda, and in Melbourne, Chris Berg from the Institute of Public Affairs. First tonight, half an hour from now, we'll cross to the Broncos Leagues Club in Brisbane to hear Tony Abbott and Julia Gillard answer questions from the floor at a community forum. It's not the one-hour debate on the economy the Prime Minister wanted, but Julia Gillard says she's ready to go if Tony Abbott changes his mind. I will be there at six o'clock tonight waiting to debate Mr Abbott on the economy. This is the debate that Australians deserve to have. My message today to Mr Abbott is I will be there for a debate on the economy. He should join me to debate the issue at the centre of this campaign. Fiona, she's going to be disappointed, isn't she? She is going to be disappointed. If, if she's really lucky, maybe uh, Andrew Robb and Joe Hockey will stand in and, <laughs> and debate for her, but no, nah, no, nah, she hasn't really got a chance. Why do you think she's caved in and agreed to go to this community forum, really on Tony Abbott's terms, because there is no guarantee of a debate like she wanted? It seems like the, this last week of the campaign, there's a real fear factor, I think, with both parties, that they're probably they're, they're watching the polls. She, the Galaxy poll showed that, that she's in danger of losing six seats in, in Queensland, um, you know, with margin forever. I'm sorry, I'm a bit cynical about the polls. But um, anyway, so they're just so worried. She probably thinks this is in Queensland and also anything called a people's forum rather than, you know, a yeah. thinly veiled media exercise. You don't want to be anti is, to people, do you? Yeah, you, know, you don't want to be anti to people. And, and I think also there's been this, this false debate about the debate that has set it up as a challenge. Like, we just saw her in that grab sort of saying, oh, I will be here at 6 o'clock waiting for Tony Abbott. And there's been this false sort of challenge and in a, in a campaign that's pretty much devoid of any substance, it's this farcical theatre that seems to be making the most impression. Chris Berg, why do you think uh, Julia Gillard has decided to attend this uh, forum given there is no guarantee of an economic debate? I'm not sure because I think this seems to show a desperation that I don't think she really, really deserves. The polls are actually looking pretty good for her at the moment, or at least certainly um, uh, as good as they have all campaign. And this stunt of standing up at six o'clock and saying, you know, Tony Abbott, where are you? Debate me. Yelling from the street corner as Tony Abbott faces um, faces what he calls the public, but is just a bunch of punters in a um, in a room. I, th I think it's a strange desperation that that and 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 I'm not sure what message she is trying to broadcast with this. I think that she really needs to have an economic debate because she's pretty sure that she can trounce Abbott on this issue. She knows that she's got a number of lines, amusing lines from um, previous Liberal Party leaders and, and Peter Costello about how Tony Abbott just doesn't understand economics and I think she's pretty confident about that. But, but she hasn't got that debate so why is she pulling these stunts? Michael Yanda, neither side's really come out of this one that well, have they? No, it doesn't look good really for either side having a debate on whether to have a debate. It's like one of those old high school debates where you spend the whole time arguing on the definition of the topic mm. rather than the substance of the topic. And I guess one of the key things with these kind of debates too is there was a lot of talk about the makeup of the audience in Rooty Hill and I guess there will be uh, again with this debate in Brisbane and I mean people who turn up to these kind of things generally tend to be at least somewhat interested, even if they do classify themselves as swinging voters. I mean, your average Joe on the street who's truly disinterested and will make up their mind in the ballot box on the day, I can't really see how they're going to be interested in spending their night talking politics with the two leaders. Well, yesterday on the drum, Liberal Senator Conchetta Fiervanti wells revealed that Tony Abbott's tactic of talking to punters at the Ruti Hill Community Forum from the floor, not the podium, was a tactic he used in a Liberal Party pre-selection back in 1993. Indeed, he blitzed it because um, those of us who were more conservative and stood behind the lectern, and, but Tony blitzed it. I mean, he took the microphone and he went down, and that was 1993, mm. and he won. So there you go. He's pulled it before. Will Julia Gillard do the same thing for Fiona Kataskis? I want him to... I wanted want to one-up him. I wanted to go Ricky Lake into the audience, maybe bust out a few tunes, <laughs> Filipino election style. Come on, this, this campaign couldn't get any more farcical. I want to see, if it's going to be theatre, at least make it funny. Chris well, Burke, can you, can you see that happening? Julia Gillard on the floor? 
I can't see it from uh, Julie Gillard. I've got to, you've got to wonder, though, now that people know about Tony Abbott's trick, what's he going to do? He, he's walked himself into a trap. He's got to walk down on the floor. What other stunts can he pull to, you know, to be that real person that he's obviously pitching himself as? I think the real... Obviously, he's decided that the best way to win this election is if he is, meets as many punters as, they, as he can personally. I, this, is, this is really his version of a citizen's assembly. And, um, and you've got to wonder what he's got up his sleeves for tonight. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Julia Gillard walks down onto the floor with her hands up, given the talk we had on, on body language. <laughs> well, but Tony Abbott has agreed to set up a debates commission, which is something the opposition uh, proposed in 2007. Surely that's what we need to sort this out. It's a classic opposition thing, isn't it? It's criticise, mm. like, we need this, we need this reform, we need, you know, freedom of information, transparency, we need to get rid of the um, uh, Charter of Budget Honesty, and then as soon as you're in government, you think, oh... No, that wouldn't work for me. I'll hold on to that. I don't reckon he'd well, follow that. Well, through. Tony Abbott loves the People's Forum. What does the panel think of the People's Forum? Is it a good idea? Well, look, I, I, personally, I mean, I don't think there's any th problem with having leaders appear more often in front of the public. If you look back at Australian political history, town hall meetings before television came in and mass media, town hall meetings were the way to go. And they offered some great... You got some fantastic one-liners. Some great from heckling, some, some great one-liners exactly. from people like Bob Menzies and Gough We don't get that much anymore. But I don't yeah. know if there's... Is there any such thing as a legitimate town hall debate now? Has it become so media-managed and so sort of massaged into this thing and there's, there's, there's focus groups and the spin doctors prepping them beforehand, you know? And they'll be doing that to Tony Abbott as well. You know, look natural, look natural. The focus groups say they want the real Julia, this kind of stuff. So, I don't know, it just seems like a big load of... Well, debate. we're going to cross live now to Brisbane where Chris Shulman is waiting for the leaders to speak at tonight's public forum. Uh, Chris, how are you going there? Well, you're outside the Broncos Leagues Club. What can you tell us about what's happening so far? Well, it's nice and colourful out here, Steve. We've got a group of protesters. Not a huge crowd of protesters, I would say. There are some protesters uh, protesting about the uh, lack of interest in the environment who are wearing party hats and occasionally blowing party horns. There's someone, I think, with a, what you might describe as a 30-foot 